Perfect. Spooky. So this is episode 16 of the Oddcast, or maybe 17 if you count the uh, magnet fishing one. I wouldn't. That wasn't really a podcast. Okay, so episode 16 of the Oddcast, and it's part two of the Black Sabbath discography. Yep. Here we are, over a month later. (laughs) <laughs> with a with a little bit of a side tour of uh, Steely Dan, but no, 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 we're going to finish what we started, and that's Black Sabbath discography. <laughs> but before we talk about that, uh, let's drink our beer. I got a Hell or High Mango from um, I think it's Revolution Brewery, right? I don't know. Brewed and canned by 21st Amendment Brewery, Brewery in San Leandro, California. Interesting. The art kind of looks like the Statue of Liberty, but it's the Golden Gate Bridge, and they're from California. Yeah. Or wait, or wait, no. Is this supposed to be a New York bridge? But it is from L.A. It's from California, though, so it might be Golden Gate Bridge. The Maybe a, a best of both worlds, the East and the West Coast. That's kind of geographically confused, in my opinion. It is. For the ASMR folks. Do you know how loud those clips, those clicks are? I always have to edit down that split second of cracking because it, like, peaks the I mic. Very, yeah, I, I, you can kind of see it already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. It smells very fruity, very mango-y. Like I can smell the, the, the seed of the mango. Ooh, ooh. Got a little bit excited there, huh? Yeah, I know my uh, gray shorts are going to have all these uh, stains just on Just consider it washed. <laughs> it's going to get all sticky. It smells very refreshing, but let me taste it. Wow. Very fruity, has hoppiness, but not that much hoppiness. It's carbonated, you know. I see we're pretending this is our first one, so I'll play along. Yeah, wow, it's really great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not usually. You said this is a wheat beer with mango flavor. Yeah, I can I can taste the weediness, and I have to say, I normally would not call myself a fan of wheat beers, but this is a good one. You know, the th- I, I don't want to put shade on IPAs, but. There's there's a a moment to drink IPAs and I don't like drinking IPAs all the time. Yeah, I can also only really drink one, maybe two in a session. You know, I just <laughs> there's guys out there who test your manliness by how many IPAs you can drink and how hoppy it is. The hoppier, the more manlier it is. I just think it's lame. Like, why do you need it to be that hoppy? Well, like usually, enjoy the flavor. Enjoy enjoy what it is. Enjoy how someone brews it. It might be a bit different. Just go with it. Yeah. I mean I I just like getting the higher alcohol content, so in theory you get drunker from yeah. the same amount of liquid, but also means it has more calories, right? Because yeah. al- alcohol is calories. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think the IPA arms race is kind of silly and seems to be on its it's not really that cool anymore i remember it was like a big thing in the 2010s now oh, it's, it's all a, about seltzers seltzers man they're pretty delicious they they're are fun. but they're if you fun. had told me in like 2010 the 10 five ten years later everyone would be drinking things like white claw yeah. and truly and consider that like the standard alcoholic unit i would have thought that'd be i thought i thought you were bullshitting me mike's hard lemonade walked so White Claw could run. <laughs> <laughs> you, good, well put. Like a Mike's Heart is still a unique and and quality beverage. Yeah. A nice lemonade is always... Uh, I like those lemon lemonade-flavored vodkas. Have you ever had the Smirnoff like, yeah, lemon vodka? Those are really delicious. I don't like the grape ones because it just reminds me of grapes, uh, of cough syrup. I would never willingly buy a grape fra- yeah. flavored drink, so I haven't had grape vodka. I like watermelon. I like mango. I'm very picky in my orange. High, more than anything, I think when people like 
mixed with orange stuff, I don't like it. I prefer the real fruit over orange fla- orange flavor stuff. And that includes soda. I don't care about orange soda that much. It's funny how different our taste can be cuz yes. I I like orange as a flavor. Ironically, you have an orange foam cover on your microphone and yes. mine is more lemon lime. Uh, what's your favorite fruit? It depends. I, I feel like the first thing that came to mind was a honeydew melon. I can always take honeydew, whether it's just the flavor or an actual mm. melon. For me, it's an orange. I love an orange. Oh, so that's why you're picking. Yeah. You love it so much yeah. that you are you have high standards. So, uh, have you ever had a durian? A darian? Is that what it's called? Durian? Yeah, I remember trying wow. some when I was in Thailand. I was like a 10-year-old. I didn't like it. You didn't like it? I Obviously, the smell is gross. How can you, can you explain the smell? Because everybody talks about how the smell is so bad. Some people don't even want to eat it because the smell is very bad. Yeah, it's like banned in some places in Southeast Asia. Like, I think you can't really eat it in public transit or something. Cause, which is weird because I think most people there, they grew up with it and don't find it that off-putting yeah. but um i don't know how you describe the smell it's been a long time it's kind of like rotten sulfur smell but it's fruity too and the fruit itself tastes good it's sweet and it's mild it just has that like funky smell to it did you know there's a small percentage of people who tried it when they smell that smell, they automatically think of the taste and how much they want to eat it right then and there. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it has its fans. Um, yeah, I'd like to try it again as an adult. I don't think I've had it really since I was 10. Have you, Has your mom tried it? What does your mom think about that? Sorry if I always bring up your mom in this kind of stuff. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> Tell her I said hello next time you see her. I will. She, I'm sure she's had a lot of it and likes it because she's probably the one who tried to get me to try it and I wasn't into it at the time. But Was she in it just to see your reaction? Probably. Probably that's part of it. You were 10 years old when you were to Thailand, huh? Yeah. The motherland. Yeah. Do you miss it? I'd love to go to go back. How do you you don't really miss something you've only experienced once. I I guess you could, but yeah. I think you should go back. Uh it's yeah. calling your name. Yeah, I yeah. I would love to go. Yeah. Do you want to talk about your impending trip to Mexico? No. <laughs> Not really. It's kind uh, of a related topic. Talking yeah, about I mean, motherlands. I'm, I'm just going to uh yeah, I'm going uh, for a long weekend. Uh, it's for something came up, a bit of a family emergency. So, trying to be a good boy and trying to support the family, and go from there. I yeah. mean, I mean, I'm I'm going to have fun, but I don't say that like because uh, it's a bit of a weird situation. But you know, I'm going to ha- have fun. Isn't like I'm going to eat good food. You know, I'm going to eat meat there. Uh, I'm going to break my vegetarianism when I go to Mexico. Um, I'm going to yeah, go. What do you eat when you go to Mexico? Are you talking about like family home uh, cooking or yeah, have, going yeah, out? I can't eat my grandma's food. Why not? Uh, got me sick. One time, <laughs> I was eight years old and she made us, uh, what the fuck is that thing called? Uh, that vegetable that Popeye ate all the time. Spinach? Spinach. She made a spinach soup. So disgusting. I remember the leaf on the spinach soup wasn't a a spinach leaf. It looked like a maple leaf. She made me Mm. eat it. I ate it, and I puked. I puked so hard. Were you the only one who got sick? Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe your stomach just wasn't used to it? I'm not used to um, her cooking. That's always her cooking that always sickens me. Oh, poor granny. But, yeah, so I I thank you for letting me, for reminding me that I should not eat her food when I see her. <laughs> um, Maybe your stomach is developed. Maybe you should try it. 
No, not you're, you're going to base that on one time when you ate. Some no, but every time I go spinach. with her, I I do get sick. It's just that's the most traumatic experience I had was that maple leaf soup, and she gaslit me and said that it was uh, what was it again? Spinach, spinach soup. Which this is a weird thing. Is have you ever had spinach soup? Is that a thing? Uh, I mean, there's Thai, uh, Indian spinach curries or okay sog paneer is that what it's called well that has cheese paneer but sog i think is spinach for in india um yeah and it's kind of soupy but the part that it like maple spinach leaves don't look like maple leaves so is it just something else entirely i think you gotta ask you gotta ask somebody no if i ask her now she'd be like i don't remember i was eight this was like in the 90s you know but enough about soup. Let's let's talk about the episode. Um, what do you want to do first? Well, we prepared for this a few weeks ago, and I'm I'm not as fresh as I was uh-huh. then. So going album by album once again is I not don't really going to work. I don't think that's the way to go. Okay. All right. Let me do a preface. I think this might be the shortest oddcast episode because I don't feel like there's going to be that much to talk about. And I'm also going to apologize to you. Even though I had a good time talking about Black Sabbath, the mm-hmm. second part was hard to listen to. It was very, very rough. <laughs> we can talk about album by album if you want. But like in the end, I think the only got, the thing that got me interested was the... The drama, like, like who left, what time, and what happened, and who else joined, which singers joined, all that kind of stuff, and stupid dilemmas of all that kind of things. I don't know, yeah, yeah, and we yeah, we talked about this. I know you were struggling to get through it. I found the personnel changes exhausting to read about and, and keep up with, but some of the music I thought was like on par with some of their classic stuff. Some, my particular favorite was in the late 80s, or mid, early, mid-90s. I forget his name now. Tony something. Tony Is Martin. Tony Martin? That's what I was thinking, too. I liked his albums as a vocalist. Yeah, he's a good vocalist. Uh, I got into arguments with people about this. Um, who do you think was the best vocalist out of all the vocalists in the band? Um... I, right now, I I really like Tony Martin. It's between him and Dio for me. For me, the best vocalist is Dio. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, he's just pretty incredible. And I have to correct or update my opinion on Dio from our last one. I was I was the one saying I missed the Ozzy albums once he left the band, and it was Dio. But in retrospect, Ozzy's probably their weakest vocalist. Yes, he is. He is. Thank you for saying that. Those those early those first like nine or so seventies albums with Ozzy, that's probably some of their best music, like most iconic songs and lyrics. So it, nothing is going to take that away from them. But just as a singer, especially after the seventies, Ozzy just became very uninteresting to me. Mm-hmm. His vocals are kind of flat and. He doesn't have that same intensity and urgency that all the other singers do, pretty like, much. Like, remember after the episode, we went to see a, a YouTube video of them at Live Aid, and you see Ozzy oh, playing, yeah. <laughs> and he was off key, a little bit out of tempo. He just maybe he was high at the time. I can't tell, but you can tell that it he was not he was not in the zone for that. Do you remember what year that video was? 1985 or 1984. And it was Black Sabbath? It was Black Sabbath featuring Ozzy Osbourne. Because that's after, like, Dio had come and gone. Yeah, I think so. And then Ozzy comes back for a tour? Just, no, just for that, just for that uh, event. Oh. Yeah, that, was, that wasn't pretty. Even though Ozzy was a pretty big solo artist at that point, or at, at least had some hits. Uh, but I think people really wanted to hear Black Sabbath with Ozzy at that time. You know, Queen was there. You know, all the main acts were there. 
Speaking of Queen, I, I read something interesting, which is that Brian May and Tony Iommi are pretty good friends. Yeah, they even toured it here and there uh, during their nine during Black Sabbath during the nineties. During With that uh, Queen, no Black Sabbath. Like B- Tony asked Brian to to oh. to be a special guest. It wow. was for that um, that uh, North mythology album, Tyr T Y R. Okay. Which is one of the Tony Martin albums, yes, right? Yes, one of the Tony Martin albums. The other singer, that's the reason I wanted to bring up, is uh, from the album Born Again. It's the album right after Dio left. And the singer is uh, Ian Gillian, who oh, is... From Briefly in Deep Purple? Yes. yes. He was decent, too. Yeah, he was good. He was good. Better than Ozzy. <laughs> yeah. Um... And then Seventh Seal, who sings on that? Is that also that guy? Ah, that's a good question. I think um, Seventh Star. Uh, Seventh, okay, Seventh Star. I was thinking of that movie. Glenn Hughes. Was he also Deep Purple? <laughs> uh, Trapeze, and also sang in Deep Purple here and there. Deep Purple is another one of these bands that I have to confess my ignorance on because besides Smoke on the Water and like Richie Blackmore, I don't yeah. I know nothing about Same their, here. their music. Really? Same here. I would you kinda know a bit about every famous band. I know, band, but I don't but know that I know I know little things. I know that Richie Blackmore is considered one of the best. Uh, I'm glad we share yeah. that. I feel less insecure now. If if you of all people don't know much about Deep Purple, then I'm not that weird. I've been meaning to hear this live album from them in Japan, which the rumor, the rumor, I don't know if it's true or, or if it's been, you know, proven is, you know, wrong. There's a loud bang in the middle of the song that goes really well with the music. And the rumor <laughs> is that bang is that someone killed themselves, like shot themselves. <laughs> they shouldn't be laughing, yeah. but like, what the fuck is that yeah. story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so everybody talked about that. So, like, I kind of want to hear it just to know if that, if it was maybe a literal bong, like, like, like from a drum set, or if it was a gunshot. A gunshot that's so loud that you can hear it over a band playing at a festival. Is it like Mount, like Fuji Rock or something festival? Something or like, like that. Budokan? It was like a big, big arena. That just sounds like it can't be true, I, but. <laughs> is there documented uh, evidence that someone killed themselves at a J- Japanese Black Sabbath? I mean, uh, uh, Deep, Deep Purple. Purple show? I don't know. I don't know. It but that just feeds into that, Japanese stereotypes too. That yeah, they're committing suicide. <laughs> Man, they love the suicide over there in Japan. And we talked about that too in Lili Shushu, Lili Chow yeah. Chow. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, the whole Deep Purple thing reminds me, like, I, I was having this thought, like, I don't know who really listens to Black Sabbath. Because the really hardcore metal heads, I think Black Sabbath isn't heavy enough for them. But Black Sabbath is kind of like classic rock, but obviously s- started the genre in many ways. But are, like, metal heads today really into Black Sabbath? Yeah, yeah, they are. It's, uh, it's just because they get to hear, like, they get to hear like their favorite metal bands, and then once they hear Sabbath, you, they they see the connections. Like, oh, because of Sabbath, we have this, and they go back and forth. You know, we were talking about stoner metal. You know, they were the ones who thought about that. Yeah, they feel Elk. closer to yeah. stoner metal to me yeah. than Slayer or something. You know, because of that conversation that what you brought up, I was thinking about this. Like, there's a lot of metal events happening this year and also last year. Like like a like a Lollapalooza but of metal, like uh-huh. all these big you know heavy thick really you know grounds to the wall kind of metal bands playing. But you know who's always headlining? Kiss. <laughs> and you know you hear Kiss's music and it's very, it's like Teletubbies <laughs> compared to what they're listening to. But all the metal fans want to listen to Kiss because Kiss. You know, it's like we're the gate door, you know, the gate door to all this kind of music. And I think that's even funnier. Yeah. Because it's mean, very poppy. Kiss is super, super poppy. Yeah. Like even poppier than Lily, uh, Lady Gaga, maybe. <laughs> There's some songs that are very, very poppy. Um, or St. Vincent. 
Wow, random yeah. references you're throwing out there. <laughs> Uh, it's it comes down to the vocals for me because Tony's riffs sound as heavy as heavy as ever, like on their last album, Thirteen. It sounds like classic Sabbath, um, but it's usually like mid tempo, not too fast and aggressive. And Ozzy just is singing like he's in a bar band on a Tuesday night. Like he's not even trying as he's getting older. Yeah, <laughs> like he never. He had a few good screams on like their first album, oh, which but, is why um, it's my favorite. Cause those screams are so good. You know, I think of that punk influence that like thrash bands took in the '80s and stuff, like Metallica, Slayer. I think that was pretty important to the development of modern metal. If you yes. just take Black Sabbath and keep going in like mid tempo to slow, heavy riffs. It turns into like stoner metal, which has some cool bands, but it just gets old fast. To yeah. Me. <laughs> um, but the and it's not even that like aggressive and and I don't even listen to like thrash metal or all of its things that have been influenced by it today. But it's exciting to watch a band that's just playing at like the peak of their yeah. ability, and if they're like still really tight. That's that's the main thing I look at metal bands like live videos of really extreme bands like uh, Meshuga or I don't know how to pronounce this but Necrophagus ne- Necrophagist Necrophagist I haven't heard that band just bands that are so fast and so heavy and like playing really complicated riffs and rhythms like that's cool to me you know you said this in the last uh, um, Sabbath episode and I've been meaning to do it you said that like a lot of guitarists. Um, well, like heavy guitars do to have the best tone of the guitar is they crank the amp all the way up and then they play very quietly, softly as possible. Hmm. You said that. Like that's how the to get the best kind of tone. And ever since you said that, I've been so curious to do that myself, but I just don't have the space or sound uh, privilege to do that. I don't think that's true for metal, but I've heard it for like lead guitar, like Jerry Garcia style to get like a lot of tone out of a note. You, you, you just want to have the amp really loud and like pick softly. So what does he do when it comes to rhythm? You still don't want to hit the strings too hard because it kind of like you get less sustain and does less he, tone. Does he go back and just turn the volume down and then starts strumming again? No, I think a lot of, Players like that who are really dynamic are also using the volume knob on their guitar a lot. Ah, yes, yes. Like, interesting thing about metal guitar tones is related but different. It's just like there's not a lot of gain usually. Like, there's crunchy distortion, of course, but it's not as heavy as you would think when you're playing outside of a band at home. Like, you need a lot less gain. Otherwise, the guitar just sounds like a fizzy, quiet mess getting buried. yeah. Well, after listening to Sabbath, I, I, I have to say my favorite lineup, I know this is uh, obvious, but it's Ozzy, Bill Ward, Geezer Butler, Tony Iommi. It's the best. Okay. And you can take out Ozzy, but those three people are really, really fundamental in my opinion. And if Bill Ward's out, that's fine, but Geezer is good. I get. I think Geezer wrote a lot of the lyrics. I, I saw that too. Yeah, so like he is like a big, big person in the band. Mm-hmm. And when he left the band, you can definitely hear the absence of Sabbath. I, uh, I wasn't paying that much attention to the full personnel besides the vocals. So I don't know what albums Geezer was on. Geezer left after Born Again and he came back on... Dehumanizer with uh, Dio, Dio. He, and then he did another one. I think he did another one with uh, I forget the name of it, but the one with Ice T. There's a song with Ice T. Yes, there's a song with Ice T. Uh, I miss that somehow. What there's just like a rap verse on a yeah. Sabbath album. Yeah. How did I not notice that? 
I think it's forbidden. Yep. This is the good. <laughs> this is the cover album. And that's their last. Okay. That's their last studio album until thirteen. Who yeah. sang on that one? Uh, I think it's Tony Martin. Okay. Yeah. So you know the producer of that album was kind of pressuring the band to get hip hop into it. So they said, "Let's get Ice T into it." And Tony didn't know who Ice T was, but after they hung out and talked, they they were pretty cool. And that's he was wild. he was surprised that Ice T knew a lot of Black Sabbath stuff. So that's when Tony says, "All right, let's do it." Arguably, it's one of the worst albums from the from the discography, but. It's Is cool that? to know that Ice T knows his stuff. I mean, obviously we know that he knows his stuff. He was in a hardcore punk band before he got big, you know, Cop Killer. Hardcore. Oh, was a punk band. Kinda. I mean, it was a bit like hip hop y, but it was very rooted into heaviness of punk slash metal. Wow. Yeah, Tony Martin was the vocalist. Uh yeah, I, I like how Tony Martin and Dio and even the two like deep ex deep purple people, they they can really sing some impressive high notes at times. Yeah. Something Ozzy couldn't never really do, even though he would sometimes try. Um, but yeah, it, it makes the music more exciting when there's that kind of almost operatic range to the mm. vocals. Yeah, and it, make, it kind of make you like it. You slowly were look, look, digging it because in the first episode, you were like not, not, a, not about it. Now you're like... yeah. Kind of dig it. Like, are you now listening to metal with the operatic voice too? Like Iron Maiden, that kind of stuff. I I might check more Maiden out. I I do like Maiden sound. Like the harmonized guitars always uh -huh. sound really cool to me, and I do like the vocal style. But just never got around to like listening to more than their famous hit songs, like "Hallowed Be My Name" and stuff like that. Is that what it's called? In the Trooper. See, I don't know what that one is. I <laughs> uh, may have heard it. But, yeah, I <laughs> I was calling, like, Dio's stuff fantasy metal and being yeah. kind of, like, disparaging of it. But I do think it's more impressive technically than same old Ozzy and Tony stoner metal songs about having mental issues. <laughs> Whatever their songs are really about, I, I don't even know anymore. Um I will say, okay, so remember yesterday we were talking, trying to prepare for this episode. We talked about how Rhino Records made a compilation of Black Sabbath, the deal years. And along with yeah. that, they had three new songs. Yeah, I, I, I listened to one of them. <laughs> Dude, I th this sounds very, very sacrilegious of what I'm going to say. But those three songs were the best songs from the second part. Like even wow. better than 13. Like I didn't like 13. I didn't care for it either. Um, like Tony Iommi's riff, uh, riff playing was very heavy. Everything sounded very good. You, you get to hear Dio's voice again, which is kind of refreshing, you know? Like when you get to hear everything, it was very good. I recommend you listen to it again. It's fun. It's very good. You're talking about the three new, um, previously unreleased songs, or yeah, the whole the, the thing? The three unreleased songs from Deal Years. The other, the other songs are compilations from Heaven and Hell, Mob Rules, and stuff like that. But they're are they just the same exact songs? No, they're just three new songs, unreleased songs. I mean, the stuff from like previous Dio records. No, are I they... think they recorded it that, like when they were going to release those new the compilation. They recorded three songs for that compilation. So they were new in like 2007 or yes. something? Yes. Yes. And it's very good. I mean, I like it. Like Yeah, the yeah. the one I heard was like Seasons of the Wind or something. something. Yeah, let me get the let me get the title tracks. And yeah, like Dio just gives his all to every performance in a way that I find really impressive. Like he's not phoning it in. He you can tell he's really trying to make an epic Yes. Song. Yes. I respect that. Even when he plays live, like, granted, it's a little bit corny how he does it, but, like, I like how, like, theatrical he can get, you know? Me too. And I know this sounds very, um, how should I say it? Um, 
very cliche to say this because I'm not patriotic. So like I feel I'm kind of regret saying this already, but like I'm gonna say it. It's nice to see an artist, a musician that's representing America. You know, you <laughs> <laughs> you got the band, which is a British band, and holy sh- holy moly, uh, a a guy from New York, an Italian guy from New York can sing better than a British guy. Uh, but yeah. yeah, the songs, for, the new songs from that deal years is "The Devil Cried," "Shadow of the Wind," and e- the one. "Ear Ear in the Wall." Yeah, I'll, I'll check out the other two. That doesn't surprise me at all that they're they're really good songs. Uh, the one note I read on Wikipedia as I was listening to Thirteen, which kind of ruined my appreciation of it, was that people criticized it. I shouldn't have even yeah. taken this to heart because I should have just listened for myself, but. People say it was like um, influenced by the loudness wars of mixing everything to be as loud as humanly possible yeah, for yeah. the radio. Yeah, and you can hear it. It's like very compressed. There's no dynamic range on the album. Yeah, why was that a thing? Because I remember Death Magnetic when Metallica had their album yeah. Death Magnetic. That was the worst. The problem that they, the biggest issue they were having. They were trying to like push it as much as they can. You would you can argue it's still a thing in modern music production because people yeah. want their thing to be the loudest thing coming out of TikTok or Spotify. But I think it's eased up a little because people realize like music sounds better if there's some dynamics to yes. it. Yes. Even though it's nice when a song comes out of the speaker and like immediately hits you and you want to keep listening and you can hear all the parts, but if if everything's loud, then it just gets really tiring on the ears. Yeah, and like, okay, now we're talking about the history of sound engineering, but like, you definitely know that, know, notice like a difference of sound, like the the volume in the seventies, like it was Stuff always was quiet really in the seventies, and then eighties happened and things got loud after that. Uh, eventually, yeah, but there's some eighty stuff like Michael Jackson records in the eighties, and like just average pop records compared to modern pop are still very quiet they still have a lot of dynamic range there might be a super loud like gated snare sample in the mix but there's a lot of space too usually and then some music in the 90s pop wise in general speaking it was very chaotic some things were very loud some things were very quiet they just didn't know what exactly to to organize themselves in that sound and i'm and i'm and i'm talking about like famous 90s techno music like like the space jam theme <laughs> stuff like that you know they were just it's just very chaotic at least maybe an alternative rock they know what they were doing like smashing pumpkin Nirvana, pearl jam Soundgarden. yeah that whole movement was very uh influential i guess yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah i mean i like okay going back on 13 Brad Wilk's drumming was very good. It was nice to see Brad Wilk. Brad Wilk is on that. He's the drummer of Rage Against. Yeah, he's a drummer of that of that album. They I missed him, that. They <laughs> asked him to 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 be the drummer because it would have been great if that was the end of of Black Sabbath. It would have been great if Bill Ward was in it, but I guess there was some contract dispute, and obviously some some dispute like emotional damage dispute. So Between Bill the Ward band. never came back. After. He came back in Reunion. Remember that live album, Reunion? Okay. And there was two or three songs that were recorded in the studio after the after the live set. Bill Ward was in that. And that was it. After that, that was it. He There were talks about him coming in and all that stuff, and then, then it didn't happen. I think it was also because of his health. There was a lot of health conditions going on, too. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. But dude, Bill Ward's drumming is great. It's great. Like yeah, I I agree. People say he's a sloppy drummer, but I don't know. He just hits the note the right way. <laughs> yeah, I think we we talked about him quite a bit last time. How he's kind of like a mix of Bonham and Mitch Mitchell in a way. Yeah. <laughs> At least that's what I heard in him. Because he hits hard, but he does those fast runs and stuff. Um, I like his playing. You, I definitely miss his playing in this second episode. You hear all these different drummers, and it's not the same as Bill. But to me, they, a lot of them 
do just fine. They and you can hear production styles changing a lot um, with some of those '90s, early two like '90s records in particular. But the drums feel massive. They the drummers hit really hard. Everything's always like really perfectly produced. I still think they're it's good music. If it wasn't attached to Black Sabbath. And I just wanted to put on like that style of metal album. I'd probably put on one of the Tony Martin albums before I put on like fucking technical ecstasy or something. Which, well, that's a different. Yeah, thing, I was gonna but, say. But they're heavier and a yeah. and like more aggressive in a way that Ozzy stuff never really was. And I don't really get the, the hate. And I was reading YouTube comments because a lot of these albums we're talking about, they're not on Spotify. They've never no, been no. released, so we had to listen to them on YouTube. At least yeah. I listened on yeah, YouTube. that's what I did too. And reading what people, the the real diehard Sabbath fans who actually know these albums and look yeah. them up, they're all super positive. They're like, this album's so underrated. Yeah, that's what I was reading too. And they were like, Tony Martin's one of the best singers of the band. People forget how great he was. Stuff like that. It's, yeah. I I agree. Yeah. I I when I first heard those songs, I was like, I can't believe no, no one's singing this guy's his praises, and everyone just remembers Ozzy and Dio, and this guy's like totally ignored yeah. as a Black Sabbath singer. I wonder what he's doing. I wonder if he's alive. He is. I looked it up. He's like in his sixties now. Uh, I think all their recent singers from that period, besides Dio, are still alive. Yeah. Did you uh, listen to Ozzy's new uh, song that they won a Grammy for Best Rock last no, year? No, I didn't even look it up. Yeah, neither did I. <laughs> I was just blown away that he had a new song in it. But nowadays, the Grammys is a joke in the sense that, like, there's a lot of rock songs out there, and to put Ozzy's the best rock song that won an award is like, you got to be kidding me. You guys got to do more more work. More, You got to explore more. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's almost like a lifetime achievement. <laughs> yeah, thing or yeah, that's the vibe I'm getting. Yeah, because I he probably never got an, a no, Grammy th- before. I think yeah, he did. I think he got a Grammy from that '90s song, "Mama, I'm Going Home." I don't know that I one either. Know. I don't. I, I'll admit to you, I don't listen to that much Ozzy. Like I remember as a teenager, I listened to uh, uh, "Blizzard of Oz" and "Diary of a Madman." Is that what it's called? Sure. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> those two ones with, uh, with, with Randy Rhodes. So, and that's um, it. Like I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I did not give uh, Zach Wild era Ozzy a chance. Should I? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a recent video of Zach Wild when he was like really skinny before he had a long beard and he was just like a, a front man in his own bit, like local band somewhere, maybe Texas. He's a really good front man. He was singing and playing his riffs. Uh, made me like, like Zach Wild. I just always thought he was the pinch harmonic guy with the bullseye Les Paul. Yeah. But he's clearly a great musician. He could I mean be a solo artist and he is. Here's a million dollar idea if Zach Wilde was smart. He could have partnered with uh Target. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Just make a right and red w- one. Yeah, boom. Boom, right there. <laughs> be making so much money. Just wait, he has the idea, he's gonna steal it from me and I'm gonna be poor. He's never gonna give me any money from it <laughs> well like he was probably doing it before target right when no, did target start 60s and 70s 60s oh, and that's always been their logo yeah i believe so i don't know we gotta ask minnesota target was around that that yeah, long i, I always so. think of them as like a turn of the century brand because i remember there was like kmart venture yeah. all these other big box stores i believe it was 70s but it was a local thing because it, it because target is from minnesota Oh. So maybe Zach Wilde just really loves shopping at Target. <laughs> and he wanted he that want, branding. He, he, wanted, he wanted a goth Target instead of red and white, just black and white. <laughs> but yeah, I don't have anything else to say about Black Sabbath unless you have. <laughs> I, d- I just, I don't want, like, what else can I, like, I'm beating around the bush. What else can I say? Like, I, I'm going to be honest, like, the best the stuff I'm going to be listening to will be the Ozzy era and Dio. 
I'm not going to listen to that much Tony Martin or Ian Gillian stuff. I will admit, though, I do have Born Again, the shirt. I bought a shirt, a Black Sabbath Born Again shirt in Mexico because it looks like a cool shirt, so I bought it. I was even thinking about wearing it today, but I think it would be just too much, too much Sabbath. Maybe I'll wear it in a future episode. Yeah. I'm wearing Game of Thrones because I'm embracing fantasy metal. I'm embracing fantasy in my metal. Did you have a favorite uh, house in Game of Thrones? Um, Targaryens are cool. I like the dragons and the stuff. Yeah. She wasn't... Uh, things did not work out well for her at the last season. No, they didn't. Spoilers. I don't get the hate about the that show's last season. I thought it was good until the end. I just think they rushed it. I, I would have been okay if they waited another year, but I think they wanted to please the fans quickly because the fans were getting very impatient. But I wouldn't well, mind waiting another year. Wasn't the reason they rushed it because George R. R. Martin was... There's many reasons, I guess. They like wanted to beat... Oh, I think they just didn't want to wait for him to finish the book because yeah. that could be years and yeah. their cast was like getting, getting older, older and it's yeah. not going to work anymore. Yeah, and, and to this day, he still hasn't released a book. So. I know. <laughs> you know what I've recently gotten really into? What? Uh, Frank Herbert in Dune. Oh, did you watch the movies? Uh, yeah. The D- Dennis Villain. Is that why you're watching <laughs> Sicario? Actually, I've just been on a Denis, Denis Villeneuve he's, kick. Isn't he a great director? He's awesome. I, I I liked his movies before, but I was rewatching Arrival, and then uh, we watched Dune Part One, and then I watched Sicario. Did you watch uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine? I saw it when it came out a few years ago, and that one's thought it was very good. good too. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's very he's a very prolific director in the sense of where, like he has a very broad paintbrush on what to do yeah he he jumps well a lot of sci-fi in recent years with arrival blade runner and uh dune but he made like a very like nitty-gritty realistic movie like made it better than traffic made it better than training day with sicario you know (laughs) yeah training day not one of my favorite movies although if i watched it again it might be fun to see denzel and being all crazy in that role. Yeah. But uh, Sicario's great. I made me want to watch Sicario 2 and 3, which Denis Villeneuve had nothing to do with. Nothing, nothing to do with it at all. But uh, Benicio Del Toro's still in it and as so the is, uh, hitman. What's his name? Uh, the other guy. Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin's in the second one. I'm not sure about the third one. Have you seen them? Two no, I haven't seen it. I don't want to watch it because Dennis is not involved. <laughs> I still want to see it. <laughs> I just like that character of Benicio. Yeah, dude, that's a hardcore character. He's just Sorry, a badass. Spoiler alert, but that scene where he confronts Emily Blunt, like where he tells... Where he shoots her? Oh, at the end. When he, when he, not, he, doesn't, he doesn't shoot her, but he's threatening to shoot her. He does shoot because her. She, no, he doesn't shoot her. He shoots her earlier in the movie, but she has a bulletproof vest on. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it was it was a, like, a, I'm effing with you. Like, I know, I know you're alive. <laughs> like don't f with me i will kill you you know <laughs> yeah but but like like the scene where like she has to write her report right and, and she wants to her to be, sign she, it. she wants to be honest but then yeah that scene was so hard to watch by the way if you haven't yeah. seen the movie yeah. still definitely see it what yeah. we just said doesn't really spoil doesn't, any of the context doesn't spoil it's, anything it's a very complicated more than anything movie. you're conf- you'll be confused by hearing this <laughs> Yeah, but when I was watching it, I was texting Oscar like, "Is this what Juarez is really like?" Because they go. You said there. Suck a thick ass. Is that what Suck a thick? Oh, Juarez. Well, it's they spend a lot of time in Juarez. Juarez. And at then the my beginning. answer was, "I never been to Juarez, but I'm from Suck a thick ass, So there's a lot of things that are very similar. Yeah, at least geographically speaking, it is. Yeah. Yeah, and with yeah, but I was doing some research because it just was fascinating in like a morbid curiosity kind of way that the mayor of. Juarez was very upset by Sicario yeah, and like yeah, yeah. it's like we f- we're really cleaning the city yeah. up. It was like that in like 2010, but yeah. it's better now. Oh god. So I feel bad funny. for them for that Whatever, guy. whatever. And I mean, 
it's a fucked up situation. Yeah. Well, if you ever want to visit my my neck of the woods of Mexico, you're more than welcome to come. But I know you know you'll be I, scared because you see stuff like Sicario, <laughs> which you know I can't blame you. But I'll say this: there's safety in numbers, and if you know someone that knows the area, you'll be you're okay. There's yeah. an open invitation, bud. One day I'm I'm gonna go. I I'm uh, I need to see more of the world. I I know, but. Oh, talking about seeing more of the world, I see that you're seeing your uh, middle finger. What's going on in the middle finger? Oh, uh, Brooke made this for me for my birthday last oh, week. Oh, happy birthday, you Leo. Was it last week? Yeah, I guess 12th, you. wasn't it? 13th. <gasps> but oh. like a, uh, about a week ago. Let's bleep this out. We don't want people to know his real birthday. Other than him being a Leo. <laughs> I mean, I don't care. Aww. Um, but yeah, I'm not used to wearing rings, yeah. so I keep having to like fidget with it. It definitely pops out because you're not a jewelry man. No. Yeah. But it looks good. You look you you do you do look good. Thank you. I yeah. like it. Pure silver. Pure silver. I can really punch out a vampire now. And a and a werewolf too. Oh yeah, maybe silver it's bullets. Maybe it's the vamp, the werewolf. Yeah, I think it's both, both of them. So in in a Twilight world, you'll be you'll be safe. Um. So we are done with Black Sabbath. Yeah, we're done. Uh, I was gonna actually solicit some ideas from our audience. Like, what what would you guys like to hear us talk about? If you have any suggestions, leave a comment, please. Please leave a comment. Send us a DM on Instagram or something. Just or comment anywhere. Uh, we'll take your suggestions into consideration because, I don't know, do you want to hear more bands? Do you want to hear about other stuff? I don't know. So that's your pick, the, the fans choose? <laughs> well, kind of. Because <laughs> if we just go back and forth choosing things for each other, I feel like it's going to just be very... Only insular. for us? Very, yeah, kind of. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm not wrapping it up yet. I actually want to talk a bit more about some other stuff. Okay. What other stuff you want to talk about? Um, we were just talking about movies. Okay. We could talk more about some recent movies. Uh, did you watch Tar? Yeah, I love that movie. Wasn't it good? Really good. Very good. Um, a lot of people didn't like it because it was slow paced. I'm kind of surprised you liked it because you don't like slow paced stuff. I I like anything that has to do with music or like yeah. composers and stuff. So I loved the storyline. I was kind of I'm I'm kind of glad that I didn't pay that much attention about the movie or what the mo- basis of that movie is, because I came into a prejudice that the movie was going to be about a conductor slash composer slowly going insane, just working on the piece, kind of like Shine. Have you seen Shine? A long time ago. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was kind of like it. the same, but instead of, of a piano player, it's a conductor slash composer. But boy, was I wrong. <laughs> yeah, it, it went some unexpected places. That yeah. one I don't want to spoil. I mean, there's there's nothing to spoil because I feel like it's it's still a character analysis. It is. Yeah. But it's kind of a flip on a common type of character who's usually a man i'll just say you know predatory sexual yeah okay okay so we were talking about this and you said save it for the podcast oscar so i watched oppenheimer and and i kind of didn't like it and i don't want to ruin it but like the reason i didn't like it is because with the exception of interstellar I really do feel like Christopher Nolan doesn't know how to write a female character. And seeing all these men in Oppenheimer really annoyed me. And when there was a female character, it was about a situation of love or a situation about talking to a, about a man. I just found it very annoying. I, I was very annoyed quickly. And granted, maybe that was the perfect opportunity for me to watch Barbie, but I still haven't seen Barbie. I want to, though. I want to. Because I really like, uh, what's her name? Greta Mar- Greta Gerwig. G- Greta Gerwig. I really like her. And I, I can tell that she she will make a great movie. She can make great movies. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not pooping on Barbie. I just haven't had the time to watch it. But to get that, to cleanse my palate, I watched Tar. And I think that was a great refresher to see, like, 
a male, di- male director, I forget his name, Tyler Fields. Um, oh, I didn't know it was a male director. But. Who, who knows how to write a female character, and it was, it was just refreshing to see. It was a writer-director for yeah. Tar? Yeah. Have you seen um, Eyes Wide Shut? Again, a long time ago. Like Remember the I piano was player? A kid, not really. He's a, he's that guy. He's that director. He's a writer director. So really, yeah. So like, it, so he's been in the industry a long time, but as a musician, no, as a as an actor and writing, directing some stuff here and there. But I think Tar was his main, like his break event. Cool. Um, there's a bug yeah. flying around here. Yeah, I loved Tar. Uh, I would love to see more movies like it. But Oppenheimer, okay, what you just said does make sense about the writing of female characters. My only counter argument is that it's basically a, about a man. It's, uh, I was going to say biopic, but yeah. I always want to say biopic because like a picture. But yeah, I is, hear people say bio, biopic. But, is, there a right, is there a wrong way to say it? I think both of them are correct. I guess. They're just very different, so I assume one is wrong and one's right, but I actually don't know which is which. But it's about Robert Oppenheimer. There are a few women in like this, his science world, <laughs> yeah. but besides that, there's like his wife. I wouldn't mind watching a scene where like when he hired that uh, woman colleague, I wouldn't mind seeing a scene where she's teaching the male, teach, um, the male scientists, hey, let's talk about this particle. But the only scene that they showed was like, hey, you're hired in my group. That was it. Uh, you just wanted that like female scientist to have more of a yeah, powerful Yeah, I was kind of getting tired of the testosterone. <laughs> it was just too much and too annoying. <laughs> and, okay, <laughs> all right. fair enough. I'm, I'm going to say this and it's going to annoy some people, but like the first thought that came in my head when I finished watching Oppenheimer was Terminator 2 did a better job. <laughs> of what? Like to this day, like I remember when I saw Terminator 2 as a kid, what scared me the most was the scene where, um, what's her name? Sarah Connor, right? Sarah Connor was, yeah. was in the playground screaming at the kids to get out because a bomb was exploding. But nobody mm-hmm. heard her and then the bomb exploded, and you see the kids and Sarah Connor just just uh, turn into a skeleton. I don't remember that scene at all. And Terminator <laughs> Two, dude, that's like the most intense scene of the movie, like se- one of the most or second, because I also like the villain. Terminator Two. Terminator Two is the one with the cop turns into a liquid. Yeah, I remember mercury. all a lot of scenes with him, like, but I don't remember a bomb in a playground, but. It, Again, it's been a long oh, time. Dude, you, uh, okay, after this, we got to see it. <laughs> I think I need to see Terminator 1 again first. Terminator 1's good. I, I've been actually meaning to rewatch that trilogy. I mean... Just the first two? <laughs> just the first two. I've seen the others somewhat more recently, and they're not very good. I heard Salvation is horrible. That's the one with uh, Christian, <sighs> Christian Bale. Christian Bale, and it's like f- futuristic, deserty. I remember actually seeing it when it was new and I didn't wasn't much into Terminator at the time and I thought it was a decent sci-fi movie. But uh, I don't know. Well, about Christopher Nolan, what do you think of his fetish for film? Cool. I mean, fine. I find I, it I a little care. silly, to be honest. I don't care. Like, Quentin Tarantino has the same fetish. I know. P.T. Anderson has the same the fetish. The two of them, or three, I guess. Is Wes Anderson too? I forget. He might be, but it would also kind of surprise me if he did because his films are so stylized and like he does weird things like yeah. square aspect ratios and stuff, mm-hmm. which I'm sure you can do on film, but it seems a little impractical maybe these days. But we were just praising Villeneuve and he uses digital and some of the best cinematographers ever, like this guy, Ra Deacon, Ra- Robert Richard Deacon, he's worked with Denis on some, uh, Dennis, however you want to say his name, on some movies, and he's just like very pro-digital, and he thinks film is you know, silly or not worth it. And this goes into music, too, and I know this is an infamous opinion, but uh, it's, I don't think it's an opinion. It's turning into a fact. 
Mm-hmm. Digital is getting better every year, every month, to the point that I don't think even analog is going to even beat it. Right. So, I mean, it's I mean good at different things. We we got to accept the reality. Like even like I even remember when Neil Young was preaching how analog is better than digital, but now you even see Neil Young saying, "Well, if you can't get into digital, let's do the best quality of digital." No, like mm-hmm. like he's he's like investing money in like on better quality like i remember when metallica was trying to do this to fight against napster like let's not do mp3s let's do mp4s and i think neil young is kind of on that same route but a little bit more extreme so you know maybe dennis is the same vibe like i can do what i need to do with digital now that digital is you know there this is the perfect director when it comes to that, James Cameron. He's completely completely digital, digital. and James virtual. James Cameron is like the Christopher Nolan of, of digital. Will, will, will he wait where digital or technology gets better so he can make a movie? Oh, shit. I need to check something real quick. Oh, boy. This. This is in. it over? Oh, it's still going because I have a new phone and the battery It's a die. new phone. It's Dylan's new phone. If people did not know, Dylan had no phone for like five months. Now he has one. <laughs> Not five months. I'm kidding, of course. But it felt like five months. Not joking. <laughs> it actually felt really good to be off the grid. And it kind of affected how I view Instagram. I had this issue. I don't think I ever told you about this, but my old phone, for some reason, the notification system got screwed up where yeah. even though I checked my Instagram settings and everything, yeah. I wanted to have notifications. It just would never send me a notification from the app. So I would have to open Instagram to even see if I got messages or notifications, which would then make me start scrolling it every time I opened it. Yeah. Um, so it was really unhealthy. But now I have a normal phone that actually works, and it can tell me if I have something on Instagram, and I don't have to open it to find out. And it's well, it's helped. And so you like the addictive. notifications? I do. I don't because then that makes me want to look at it more. But then. Well, I don't I, get that many. So. I have, I have, <laughs> ma- I have made a habit of looking at frequently that I need to stop. It's like you know. So you t- don't have notifications turned on? No, because then if that's the case, it will just ring all the time. Oh, uh, yeah. Because like, you're very social. I, I don't know there. if I'm social. Maybe, or maybe if I'm addicted, I need to stop. I don't know. I really don't know. But like you know, the 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 the, the companies really did know how to get those dopamine levels right to hit everyone to look at their phones. Oh yeah, they sure did. <sighs> It's not cool. It's not cool. I'll say that. Um, how do you feel about this? Uh, since we're asking the fans what the next topic is, what would it well, be okay? I'm just throwing that out there, and maybe not for the next yeah. episode, because I doubt anyone's going to actually suggest okay. anything between now and the next time we record. I'm just saying, in the uh-huh. future, leave your su- give us okay. your suggestions. We'll we'll come up with our own topic for next time. Okay, so what is the topic? I said we will. I don't have it uh, yet. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to think about the podcast I listen to. They don't announce what the episode's going to be the until, week before. They just until. post it okay. and they're like, "Oh, you're pleasantly surprised." It's, All right, you'll let be me this. know. You'll let me know what you want to do because I know that something's brewing. Something I mean, it could go lots of different directions. Yeah. But yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. Okay. We're at a uh, just about an hour. Do we want to stay true to our word and make this the shortest podcast? Sure. I'm cool with that. We'll, we'll also experiment. Maybe short op- episodes people like more than the longer ones. I can oh. definitely see that if they're like action-packed and have good content. I feel like neither of us just really wanted to talk about Sabbath. So we're well, just I mean, like there isn't that much to talk about. Like... Oh, what do you think of Rick Rubin uh, on the 13th? D- did, he, did he help that much? I don't think he helped that much. No. In fact, he's probably the reason it sounds so compressed and loud because he likes doing that sort of thing. Yeah. He, um, it's also a fine album. I just don't know whenever, when I would ever want to listen to that. Ozzy's voice, especially of that era, <laughs> Ozzy in his post-30s just... Gets on my nerves. Well, do you want to talk about our infamous 
episode, the Steely Dan one, and how oh, yeah. and how many comments we got out of all the out of all the podcast episodes we've done. That so one had the people. most comments. Thirty two is the last time I read. Thirty one. Thirty one comments. Yeah, we wanted to take a moment to address some of our comments, haters mostly. Uh, before we hate, uh, I do want to give compliments to C- Cedar Harris, who originally is that the one I pinned. Yeah, that's the one you pinned. Who originally was going to hate on us, but then he, unlike the other haters, uh, gave us a chance to listen to it, and he enjoyed it. Or they enjoyed it. Sorry if I misgendered your buddy. Um, I liked I liked their comment a lot. It was just very good. He was very informative. He enjoyed it. There were moments that he was kind of angry, but on our defense, he wasn't watching it because you're you're very good at at uh, correcting if one of us if one of us made a mistake. Oh right. But overall, you know, Cedric found it very enjoyable. And by the way, I I, mean, I, I do put <laughs> visual corrections up on the screen, but. Remembering the fact that we are a podcast and you should be able to listen to it and get the full information. Like if that's if there's serious corrections, one of us probably needs to actually record a little bit of audio explaining why or I, what's what's the mo- the true. mistake. I also personally like that uh Michael Lisk uh commented on it saying the, the strategically placed headshot got you a new subscriber. Got yes. me very very happy. AP Mike, if you still want to be a gu- if you want to be a guest in this show, let us know. We'll be happy to, uh, you know, <laughs> for you to talk. We can talk about anything you want. We can talk about the Grateful Dead. Oh yeah, what did he say when you asked him? He just he just sent me a heart. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm he's a busy man, so he's, he's he has like three three podcasts, so I get it. And he also has a job and stuff like that. So what what's his job? Being a, a producer? bartender. <laughs> oh really. Bartender in, in Bayonne. Where's I kinda, Bayonne. Bayonne is in New Jersey. I kind of want to do a pilgrimage and just visit him. And just even <laughs> though I don't, I'm not a bar guy. I just want to drink a beer and just say hi. You and were then, at a bar last night to see a band. That was that's different. Those are the only bars I go to yeah. too. But they're still bars. True. So there's that, and there's people saying like Steely Dan's outstanding. Another person said this is really funny. A tribute to SD. So maybe they did like it. Oh, right. R.P. Walter Becker. This one kind of pissed me off. This person called you out, and I kind of made me angry. Um, Dylan doesn't know how to use a microphone, apparently. <laughs> yeah, which is fair because uh, my voice was really weird on that one due to a technical malfunction. Yeah, but then I go to his... You know, I go to I go to his uh, profile, and he's not even using a microphone like like we are. He's using the comp- uh, laptop microphone, and he's a philosophy professor from some university. And I'm thinking, like, you would at least be nicer to some people. But yeah, that's you know, right, Mister. We we spied on you. We, you spied on you. us. We can spy on you. <laughs> yeah, I I I don't know what the motivation of some of these people to comment was. And my favorite was the one guy who was like uh, using a, asking a moronic question is will not get views or something like that. Everyone knows the answer to is Steely Dan good was the thumbnail. And yet he watched it enough to comment and the one <laughs> boost that you're our algorithm. It's Jeff Russell 4728 in other than news, a moronic title subject. Everyone already knows the answer to doesn't drive views. Sadly, this is also something everyone else, everyone already knew. That's so stupid. Damn, your 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 uh, your memory is pretty good. Oh, that one stuck with me. Yeah. Um, also, all old core. One of my, my friend, old core X, basically agreeing that Steely Dance sucked, and it's just uh, yeah. What did you say? Like two Kenny G's. Yeah, when, I when thought that was funny. When he said that, it reminded me of that documentary I highly recommend you to watch. The the Kenny G one? Yeah. That was, was a good documentary. It was a very good documentary. It made me like Kenny G. It made me like him and hate him too. <laughs> like it made, I I I yeah, it, I I had more respect after watching it. Um yeah. Do you want me to keep on going, or do you want me to stop? 
Uh, the I think there's only a couple more. Like someone was like the total waste of breath. breath. Yep, that's one by Paul Geek. <laughs> what about the rectal one? I forgot what that is. Okay, I liked it because it was very, very um, cheeky. Is it kind of rectal to say that these guys are a bunch of assholes? I mean, who knows? They are maybe a, bu- a bit on an ego trip, which is sort of a par of, for the course. And for composers, they are pretty good performers, better than most. And for the dirty work, they call it, they call in professionals. Most more of a creative enterprise than a band. Something, same thing happened to the Beatles. Did that turn them into butt cavities? Oh yeah, I remember that yeah. now. So that guy was pro Steely Dan, or at least defending them. Yeah, at least at least they were nicer compared to like, oh, don't be don't be an idiot. So of course Steely Dan's great. <laughs> yeah, it was a very illuminating experience putting that online and seeing the responses. Very polarizing. Yeah, which is what we knew we were doing. At least when I made that thumbnail image, I knew it was going <laughs> to get people either upset or like, I thought it was funny. Like. I mean, kudos to you to find, like, the right one where I'm just pointing at you like this. Like, I didn't even know I point at you that much. Do I do it a lot? I don't know. <laughs> I, every time I do a thumbnail, I, like, have to scrub through the whole video to find a funny-looking moment. <laughs> and it's never, like, where we're both doing something funny. I have to use one of you and then one of me. Oh, uh, that's together. funny. I will say that a lot of my friends who listen to it did say that it's the most intense one that we both had. <laughs> and I think they were jokingly saying this that they thought they were, our friendship was going to be over after that episode. <laughs> well, I personally find it hysterical. Yeah, I really enjoyed the feeling of being like on edge, like trying to argue. So I was telling you, like, we should find more topics we really disagree on and uh-huh. have more arguments. But the hard thing about that is that, like, I feel like I usually will f- find the good in something if I listen to it enough and I'll like start liking something even if I don't like it. So I'm not going to be, I don't know what I would hate on if we chose something. And I don't want to be the one just defending every, I mean, everything on, that on you're On the first episode hating. of the Sabbath one, you were defending Ozzy over Dio. Yeah, but I wasn't like, I didn't hate Dio, but that was probably the most critical I got of an artist is like not... I, I missed Ozzy in those first two Dio records, but now I'd, my tune has changed. I think Dio's a better singer and, and musician. So, yeah, I don't know. Okay. We could just be like, I'm the defendant, you're the prosecutor, and we just bring <laughs> in a bunch of things that you hate, and I'll try to you know, that's fight for them. One of the problems I have in my lifetime uh, maybe I should change, but I don't think I can because it's just now my personality. I feel like uh, I have. Sorry, now I feel like I'm a therapy. Like I'm in therapy. Like I've lost a lot of potential friendships because of my opinions. And sometimes I wish I could change my opinions, but in reality, it's like I like what I like. I just can't. Like I ruin a, a lot of our opportunities because of my taste. Do I regret it? Yes and no. I just I regret that like it could have been a good situation. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Right? Is that that's one of those situations in life? Like, can you be a little more specific? What kind of opportunity? Like a friendship, a, a relationship, friendship, relationship, or just a a situation where you might be like, yeah, a friendship more than anything. How does or, that usually go down? They like something that you just can't stand, and you can't be friends with them i just say i don't like it and then they don't be friends with me because i said it (laughs) that sounds more like it's on them yeah of course but i don't know you know but if i were if i if i were if i were more of a people pleaser where would that take me yeah i don't think anyone should like pretend to like something for the sake of any sort of social but there's a lot of people that are like that and that you know they're they're you know they're riding up the social cl- cl- uh, social ladder, yeah. Just you because could probably, they can kiss ass. You could argue like, that, uh, has that happened to you in the art world? What? Where you see some artist and you know their artist is horrible, and you just you just can't lie to yourself, and you just say you maybe you say to some person or maybe you say to yourself that person's bad, but everyone else in society like in your in your 
little world of artists like like that artist and they can't seem to shake off of it and you're like the one like you're the the grain against the salt the i mean the grain the right was it that the rice against the grain uh something like that i forget i forget the term but like you're like you're the only one that's completely different compared to everyone else and maybe yeah. sorry, contemporary God. art world is like full of stuff like that cuz there's so much art that if you don't know the context, don't know why that artist is important, it just looks laughably bad. Yeah. And someone outside of that world will have no context for why it's valuable or why it's good. And that's a whole other can of worms to get into. But um, I think but that's an example I'm saying. Like, if I just kept my mouth shut, where would it take me? But then again, like, I don't know. It's like, has that happened to you? Uh, well, I don't think you have to be like an asshole about it. Like if somebody's enjoying something, you don't have to tell them, you know, you, you really shouldn't like that. It sucks. Like, why can't you just let them enjoy the thing they like? Oh, I do. But it, when they ask me something, I mean, I, I'll admit I used to be like that more when I was younger. Now I'm more like, Hey, you like what you like. Right. Yeah. So I think there's a, a difference between people pleasing and being like oh yeah i like that too but you secretly hate it and yeah. just like not uh not worrying about what they like you yeah. know you can like the things i don't know find people with common interest that's what all people kind of do but uh no one likes 100 percent of the same things and if they did it'd be boring yeah that's true I heard a great quote from a very underappreciated, brilliant man the other day on Instagram. Okay. Uh, you know, Jeff Tweedy has a new book coming oh, out. <laughs> and what's he about, said what's something. It, what's, what's the book about? Is it a memoir? It's, it's like another book on songwriting. He had okay. one that was actually a really good book. I listened to it on audiobook uh, like last year called How to Write One Song. But he has a new one that I don't know what the full theme is about. But How it's to Write about, Two Songs. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the title, but I don't think it is. But he said something about how uh, a song is like a way to get get around the fact that we'll never know what isn't what's going on in another person's mind. And because uh, he says like no one can ever really know how another person feels, but a a song is the best. He he put it in a very eloquent way that I'm paraphrasing now, but it's like it's the best. Uh, way to cope with the fact that we don't have a like collective consciousness you can listen to a song and like experience someone else's point of view that yeah. way or maybe you hear a song and it feels exactly like the way you feel about something and you feel like that connection to the song and that's why there is so much music in the world and even though there's billions of songs being made people keep making more because it's such a addictive feeling to like want to pursue that connection through art and um, i think that's why there's so many like aspiring songwriters even a lot of them who feel like they'll probably never get their music heard on a large scale but you do it anyway because you love it and you're seeking that kind of connection so i guess where i'm going with that is the fact that like no shit people don't like the same things yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's not my place or I don't think it's anyone's place to like tell tell people what's good or bad but there's there are critics and there are podcasts <laughs> and whatever the hell we're doing on this is like giving our opinions so and people seem to like it yeah who knows as uh, the the what's going on in the minds of anyone who listens or watches this is a total mystery to me. It is to me as well. Like I did not, I was not th expecting to think that Magnificent would be a top view. But you know, yeah, the, the part that's part of the algorithm, I guess. Yeah, and I do want to do more stuff like that too. Yeah, just like, let me know. We can we can talk it out. Yeah, do more activities. And film them. Yes. Um, yeah, so give us your suggestions for that, too. 
Things yes. outside the podcasting studio that you think would be fun for us to do. We we made we might just take your ideas. Yes. Well, should we call it a quits then? Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. Thank you. That's the end of Sabbath. Till next time, everyone. Take Adios. care. You're very somber. <laughs> oh, no. My cat wasn't waving because of this thing. Oh, uh, now it's waving. It's waving goodbye. Goodbye. Meow. 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 Feels like the beginning of Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs>